Okay, today we're going to talk about a unique property of fluids called viscosity. We're going to use the Greek letter mu to describe viscosity. And at different books use different terms for this. Um, you might see dynamic viscosity or absolute viscosity. Those are all synonyms. Um, and what viscosity describes is the fluidity of the fluid, how well the fluid flows. Um, a more technical definition is the shear stress required to cause a unit change in the rate of angular deformation. And that's described by this equation below. Um, that, that description is a little complicated, but I, I think if we talk through it, it makes some sense. If we look at that term on the left of the equation there, that is tau, which is shear stress, or a force per unit area. So we have a force acting on a fluid, and then on the right-hand side of the equation, that differential is the rate of angular deformation. Although there, that also has several synonyms. It could also be called the velocity gradient or the rate of shearing strain. Um, and if you look at that term, it's du dy. U is the velocity of the fluid. And then y is some direction. So if you think about it, this is, there's a force on the left-hand side of the equation, and then uh, a change in angular deformation. And this is how we originally defined a fluid in the last lecture, right? We defined a fluid as something that deforms continuously when it's under a force. So this equation describes that. You apply a force, and you get a certain amount of angular deformation. And then that is all controlled by mu by the viscosity. So a more viscous fluid, a, a fluid with a high viscosity, you get less angular deformation. With a um, low viscosity fluid, a thin fluid, you get a lot of angular deformation. Let's apply this now. Um, we're going to take a tank of water with a, a solid bottom on it, and we're going to um, float a board across the top of it and apply a force to that board. As we pull on that board, we, um, the board moves with a certain velocity. Um, now what happens is as you tug on that board, it sits on the water, but it actually drags the water underneath it along with the board. What this does is this sets up a velocity gradient because the top of the water moves along with the board, whereas the bottom of the water is stuck to the immovable, immovable ground. So the, top, the water at the top of the water column is moving. The water at the bottom of the water column remains stationary. So you get an increase in velocity as you can move upward through the fluid. That's called a velocity gradient. Um, that property or that, um, that function we call a no-slip boundary condition. And this is an important property of, of all fluids that when they interact with a solid at the surface, at that interface, the fluids will stick to the surface of the solid and will move with that solid. And this plays a role here, but we'll see this again later in the course. This actually plays a very important role in, in flight and generating lift. Um, okay, so as the board moves, it carries fluid along with it. It sets up a velocity gradient. That is the same velocity gradient that we saw in the equation um, describing viscosity. So that du dy, that, that's what that picture of the triangle is in, in the figure there. And then the magnitude of that velocity, how, how fast we're able to pull that board given a unit force, so a unit shear stress, is a function of the viscosity of the fluid. If you have a really thick fluid, you're going to have to pull harder to move that board across the top of it. Okay, so in solving problems, we can start with this equation, and this is the equation that's in the FE handbook, but it's, it's kind of cumbersome. Rate of angular deformation is not easy to work with. So what we're going to do is we're going to simplify this equation before we actually use it to solve problems. The shear stress, we're going to convert to a force per unit area, and the um, velocity gradient, we're going to approximate by um, assuming it's the velocity that the object is moving divided by the, um, the, the thickness of the fluid layer. And we'll do a quick example of this. 
Um, here we have uh, our water in a tank with a solid bottom and then a board sitting on top of it. As we pull that board along, um, it moves at a certain velocity given the force that we've applied. Let's put some dimensions to this, and, and this is totally out of scale, but um, the box is has a length of 20 inches, a width of 10 inches, that's the dimension coming out of the board, and a height of 5 inches. And instead of a, a tank full of water, let's consider this like a thin layer of oil with a thickness of 0.1 inches. Um, give it a viscosity. And now what I'm going to ask is, how do you find the force required to move that box at a velocity of 3 feet per second? We start with our simplified equation. We're solving for force, so we're going to rearrange that. Um, the first term there is area, and this is an important step in solving these problems, is identifying what area you're looking at. So you have to find the surface area of the object that is, um, that is in contact with the fluid. So that's the bottom area of this box, and that would be 20 inches by 10 inches. And then um, the rest is all given. It's just plug and chug. It's the area times the viscosity times the velocity divided by the, the thickness of that oil layer. And then we have a unit conversion, and you end up with 0.476 pounds. Um, so this is a major concept in fluid mechanics. You can devise a number of different problems using testing this. Um, just keep in mind you have to you have to be able to convert from that simple from that um, differential equation to the simplified equation. You need to be able to identify the wetted area or the area that um, that is in contact with the fluid. And then um, some other things that can be tricky is you make make sure you use the force that is actually acting um, in the direction of movement or or normal to the um, to the fluid direction. Okay, so that's dynamic viscosity mu. These are the units that are typically used for it. It does have its own unit, which you might see sometimes a poise and uh, it's a gram per centimeter squared, which is kind of strange conversion if you think about it. Um, you'll see this in industry a lot. They refer to viscosity in terms of centipoise. You can also describe viscosity in terms of a kinematic viscosity. That We use the Greek letter nu for that, and it's um, the dynamic viscosity divided by the density of the fluid. Um, make sure you know how to convert from dynamic to kin kinematic viscosity. Um, using that equation. And kinematic viscosity also has its own funky unit called a stoke and it's a centimeter squared per second which is again a pretty strange conversion. And then the last thing I want to mention is that um, we talked about density being for liquids being fairly constant over a wide range of temperatures. Uh, viscosity varies tremendously with temperature. So if you're given a temperature in a, in a problem, make sure you look up the proper viscosity for the fluid at that temperature. Okay, we've been talking entirely about Newtonian fluids. There are some fluids that actually don't respond the way we've described. In some fluids, there isn't a linear relationship between shear stress and the velocity gradient, which means that that equation we've been using doesn't work in this case. Um, and what this looks like is you see an apparent increase in viscosity or decrease in viscosity as you apply more stress to the fluid. Uh, two good examples of this are quicksand and latex paint. These are examples of thickening fluids and thinning fluids. The, the quicksand, if you get stuck in quicksand, the best way to get out of it is to stay calm and to slowly pull yourself out of it. If you, if you use sudden movements and you, you push hard against the, against the quicksand, it will push back and it will, it will thicken and make it more difficult for you to extract yourself. Um, latex paint is the opposite. It's designed to be a thinning fluid so that when you, when you apply it to your brush and you lift your brush out of the paint can, that uh, fluid has a, a high enough viscosity that it doesn't drip, but it stays on your brush. When you then push it against the wall, it spreads and it, it flows over the wall nicely. So it actually has a 
decrease in viscosity as you push on it, which um, lets you apply the paint in a, in a, in a good way. If we look at this on um, a figure comparing uh, shear stress versus the velocity gradient, with Newtonian fluids, we said that this is a linear relationship, and you, you can you can do tests and show that. Um, but with non-Newtonian fluids, you get a non non-linear relationship. So this this is like quicksand in this in this case. You can see it's a thickening fluid. As you apply more shear stress, you get less of a of a velocity gradient. Um, and then we also talked about those strange fluids like toothpaste and mayonnaise. And this is how those appear on this figure. They behave like solids at low shear stresses. So you get no deformation up to a minimum, minimum shear stress, and then they start to flow like fluids.